you know, ready. You know, only, it only needs to be taken out if it needs to be taken out, right? But it should be checked every day, because normally you run this, I don't know how many hours you're gonna run it. It also depends on the dough, if it's yeah. sticky or not. Now we're gonna take out the measuring piston. To remove the measuring piston, you need to remove, first remove this pin. There's a button on the end of the pin. Push the button, slide the pin out. And you can lift this up out of the way. There are also a couple of tools to help you get the piston out. Probably don't need them now because it's, it's not that dirty, but this little hook tool is used to fit inside to hook the bearing on the center so that you can pull this out. That's the piston itself. The T-handled wrench over there. Could I have that T-handled wrench? A T-handled wrench is also used back here. There's a nut right in this position here, which has to be removed. Oh, a little shake there, huh? Right. The nut can be removed. Then there's another tool in here. Just a threaded tool, which is used to pull the liner out. There are threads inside. Thread the tool in. Make sure you go in quite a ways. Don't just go in a couple threads. You might pull the insert out. And then the liner comes out. This has to come out every day. Again, it can be taken to the sink. No hot water. Okay. This particular piston, this round one, is good for one and a half to four and a half ounces. That's the scaling range on this one. To go to the larger sizes, you have a larger piston to handle the larger ones, which is a square piston which is right here. This one. This one is for your larger pieces. And notice this one, the plastic part isn't captured inside like that one. So you need to be careful with it that you don't drop when you're pulling it out. Right? But this piston secures in the same way with the bolt. And the same tools are used to take it out. After removing everything for cleaning, the, this cavity should also be wiped out. Make sure there's no old dough inside there. That dough gets hard inside there. It'll make it very difficult to get the piston back in, even if the piston is clean. And actually what they do is they give you a, there is a little scraper. I would, just a little piece of metal, just to use so you can scrape off any hard dough that might accumulate on the sides. And don't forget the top. To install the inner rounding drum, place it on the machine, line up the round holes for the washers, which we uh, took off. Usually it's a good idea to get them started before you push it all the way on, because sometimes it's a little difficult to rotate this once it's all fully in place. So if you get them started, then you know you can push it on and you know they'll line up. Reinstall the three nuts. socket. Just firm them up. They don't have to be overly tight. They just need to be snug. Because remember, you're going to be taking this off and on. Okay. Now, before we go any further and put the cover plate on, there are two grease fittings in this cover plate. Here and here. We've already greased them. What they do is they go to two components inside. There's a spherical bearing and a hub, which actually makes this thing go in and out. By that pulley turning, this actually slides in and out 
the dough piece is trapped in the hole on the drum, and that's how you get your rounding into the ball. So these, these for you guys here, every 10 to 12 hours of operation, you need a pump of grease for those. Two of the most important ones on the whole machine right there. To finish putting it, to put it back together, the drum, the drum has five notches in it, as you can see here. There's actually a pin, which is located, you can't see the pin, it's uh, on the bottom, but it's located on this back plate. It's a post that this will fit into. And that's your timing. What that's for is so that when the piece falls off of the dividing head, it hits the hole. Now until you make your real dough and your real time stuff, you don't know which one you're gonna use. So you might have to put it in and try it and see where it is and then put it back in again. But once you find which notch it is, it'll always be that same one. So whether you use this one or this one or this one, it doesn't matter. And it will, should be the same for all the drums. But which one that is, you don't know until you have your final product because that determines how it falls off the knife and the head and everything. So you can't determine. Which one did we have it in, Dale, at the middle? Yeah, we had it in the middle for our test. So put the drum in. Slide the belt out of the way. Make sure it's on. Slide it in. Rotate it. If it's in the notch, you can feel it fit into the notch. That's the first one. If you wanted the second one, that would be the second notch. That would be the third notch. Maybe a good practice would be to stop it with the pin on the top so you can see it. <laughs> so you don't have to, right? That goes on. Cover plate fits on. Sometimes the drums, especially the big ones, are a little heavy. You have to lift up on them a little bit to get them on. Cover plate. Hand wheel. They put a plus sign, but that means tighten. Just snug, just like that. The belt, tighten the belt up. Belt's tight, close the door. Also one thing to point out, all of the removable covers have magnetic switches on them. The magnet is on the removable part. The wired part is on the machine. This machine will not run with any of the covers open. You have to have all the covers on it. On this side of the machine, when you lift off the cover, you'll see what we call the main piston or main ram right inside there. That's what actually pushes the dough to the other side to fill that white plastic piston, the measuring piston. Right? That also has to be removed and cleaned. To remove that, you need to, similar to the pin on the other side, push the button, slide the pin out, take the arm, and you can slide. I'm not going to take it all the way out but because it's pretty heavy. Sometimes you need two people to do it. It's a pretty heavy piece of steel. And that needs to come out and taken to the sink. It can be cleaned in the sink as well. Hot water can be used on that. This is all steel. Right? All the components, the measuring pistons, all of them should have a light coat of mineral oil on them as you put them back in the machine. The lubrication oil, this oil here, it even states right on here, it has to be a white edible mineral oil. Minimum viscosity, 300. No color to the oil at all. It shouldn't have any yellow color to it or anything like that. It should be absolutely clear. To reinstall the measuring piston, lift up the lever, take the piston. It might be good to know what you just said about uh, cleaning them and then putting a little bit of mineral so All of these, before you Normal opera, you, this would have been cleaned in the sink and washed and coated with mineral oil before you place it back in the machine. Right. Place that in like that. Now, 
This same piston is used when you run bread. When you run bread, you only run one piece of bread at a time. Right? You know this one has two pockets in it, right? All you do to run bread is you don't put this nut on there to secure the liner in place. What that does is now you use the whole plastic cavity as your piston. It's one big piston instead of two small ones moving in and out. Right? If I secure, if I secure this tab, then just this slides, these two pieces will slide in and out. But without that on there, the whole thing slides in and out. And that's how you run bread. Yeah. Running rolls, place the washer, take the nut. Put the nut back on. Just, just snugged up, doesn't have to be tight. Take the pin. Now the pin, of course, has to go in whether you're running rolls or bread. You still need to put the pin back in. Put the pin in, put the cover on, and you're ready to run rolls again. The cleaning of the pistons, is it's very important not to drop these pistons, not to nick the ends or to cut them because everything is very pretty tight tolerances and if it is nicked it does affect how it slides in the machine then what happens is it slides it gets a nick so you clean it up you get rid of it then it works but now you have a path there for the dough to come out so then you start leaking dough and stuff like that so it's real important that they don't bang these things around they need to need to really take care with these when they take them to the sink for cleaning and no hot water Greasing the machine. As you can see, all the grease fittings, they are sealed bearings. These, these bearings don't need a lot. You'll see when it's running, if you ever had the cover open and it's running, everything turns very slow up in here. Everything goes slow. It's not a, a, a high speed use. The most important grease fittings on this side of the machine are here. You have one on each side of the hydraulic cylinder and you have one on this side here on the crank plate. This one right here. Those three are the most important on this side of the machine. The hydraulic, let's talk about the hydraulics a little bit. The hydraulic cylinder, what we use to get your scaling is, it, we use it more of like a shock absorber, okay? When I close that valve on the outside to get scaling, what I'm doing is I'm forcing the fluid to go through this control valve. This is the pressure relief valve. It is adjustable. You can control how much push you have on the dough. Right? Obviously, the, the least amount of push is better for the dough and better for the machine being able to still scale evenly. Right? So the less pressure, the better for everything. But you need enough so that everything is even. It works just like a regulator. It has an adjustment screw in the front. The further in you screw it, the more pressure you have, the further out it comes, the less pressure you have. So what we do by closing that valve on that side is we force the oil to go through here. So that controls how much that cylinder or shock can collapse. That determines how hard you push the dough into the measuring piston. Right? When you bypass that valve, then of course you're going through that other valve and this is not in, in use. That's why when you open that, you have no scaling. When you close it, you have scaling. But this controls it. There is another control valve in here. It looks like just the head of a bolt. That's a check valve. That's for as the cylinder does compress when it's pushing the dough, it allows the fluid to get back into the cylinder for the next push. Right? So those are two control valves here. The rest of it is just general sanitation, keeping the chains oiled. Nothing much more than that. Checking the belts, making sure the belts are okay. The divider is most of your work. MO671 bread molder. Turn the molder on. The green turns it on. Red stops it. Green turns it on. This is an emergency stop. That kills it. Nothing will restart. It has to be pulled out. Okay. Also, there are several safety switches. 
The front cover has a safety switch. If it lifts up, it shuts it off. The hopper cover, if it lifts up, shuts off the molder. And there's also in the back, a back cover, which when lifted up, shuts off the molder. So you have three safety switches on here that all have to be okay before the machine will run. The machine will not start. For example, if I had this cover up, I cannot start the machine. The machine, all the covers have to be closed to start the machine, okay? For sanitation on this machine, that's why these covers open, you can lift up the covers. Normally a damp rag is all it takes to wipe off the rollers, wipe off inside. Any dough you see on the scrapers, on the plastic pieces, wipe off the dough in the back side. And then it's the same on the front side. The front also, you lift this up, gives you access to the rollers so that you could just take your rag in there and wipe it all out. Or if you have an air hose to blow it out, but usually wiping the rollers down with a damp cloth is sufficient. The curling chain can be removed for cleaning. It has a couple of clips on the end. Clip can come out, take it out. There's a couple little pins. Slide the brass pins out. That's what it looks like. Take this one, slide out the pins. Then the chain can lift out. And you can clean the chain, any dough like this that gets built up in there. It will get hard and this it will distort this chain. It needs to be clean. Right. When reinstalling it, this little flap always goes down on the inside. That's what actually starts the curl when the dough piece comes up to it. That's hanging straight and it catches the edge of the dough piece to start the curl. To reinstall it, it goes back in the same way. sure we're the same on both sides. Goes in place. Brass pin goes back in. Both sides. And then these hook back on. hold the chain. That holds the chain from drifting side to side too far. It just keeps it in the middle. The pressure board, which is here, also lifts up out of the way. By pushing in on this bar, it enables me to lift this up. There's a little rod here, just like the old car hoods. Lifts up for cleaning of the belt and the cleaning of the board, should you have any buildup on the board. The catch, this also comes off for cleaning lifts off and slides out so it can be cleaned. Hot water, warm water? Yeah, you can use warm water. This is Teflon coated.